I know what you're thinking. Man, is that a gorgeous poster, huh? Forget about your flying eyeballs and Hawaiian oxamoxas. Look at these graphics. Wow. <laughs> okay, so I start off sarcastic, sorry. Uh, this is PosterCentral.com's video blog, and I'm Pete Howard, and have a very unusual subject to talk about today, and that is the, um, you know, concert posters, I collect advertising pieces. They were made for one reason, to sell tickets and then be thrown away, and I can guarantee you all of these were thrown away. I mean, this is just uh, nothing but black and white words. In fact, it's sort of, um, yeah, it's just, it's just mo meant to be posted and inform you of the acts, like a newspaper ad or something. But anyway, so concert posters were made to sell tickets. So naturally, they touted the biggest artists to get people excited and saying, oh, I want to go see them, and they go buy a ticket, right? Well, occasionally, you'll have an old vintage concert poster where a major act appeared at the show, but was not advertised on the concert poster. And that's just kind of a cool, it's kind of a cool niche, you know, I don't think anybody collects these things, but... Um, I sort of nicknamed them ghost posters, you know, because it first came up like a 1955 Hank Snow poster had Elvis not on the poster but on the show. So I was like, wow, that's an Elvis ghost poster, you know, he's at the show. Gives it really nice, certainly cachet, -er, but uh, as a collectible poster, that's, uh, that's another, another discussion to be had altogether. It's a person-by-person -person basis, really. So, well, if I'm going to call them ghost posters, which is a good one-syllable, easy, quick reference to what I'm referring to, this has the resemblance of a ghost because it's black and white. But this is a very interesting ghost poster to start with and is promised by the headline the Jimi Hendrix experience is involved in this. So this is 1967 and uh, this is a long lineup of acts for the Rheingold, Rheingold Beer uh, Music Festival in Central Park, New York. Again, 1967. And if you come in here on uh, Wednesday, July 5, can I get it there? You see the Young Rascals and Len Chandler on Wednesday, July 5. Well, <clears throat> yes, uh, love, much as I love the Young Rascals and I ain't going to eat out my heart anymore and all their early singles and everything, on that date, Wednesday, July 5, 1967, that's right, Hendrix played. Hendrix opened for one of the two slots. Um, uh, even though Jimmy was, um, had made a huge splash at the Monterey Pop Festival the month before across the country in June of 67, we all see that as a ubiquitous performance now because it's on DVD and movie theaters and everything else. But at the time, he just made a heck of a lot of fans in Northern California or whoever had traveled to see Monterey Pop. So he was still largely unknown throughout most of the country. So he had done Monterey Pop in June, so he was still only clubbing the rest of the country and certainly in New York City. In fact, at this time, he was playing a lot at the scene in New York City, a nightclub. And it would be a month before his first single, first charting single, Purple Haze, would hit and his first album, Are You Experienced? would hit the LP charts, and so pretty much a true relative unknown. So here you have the Rheingold Beer Music Fest taking place. Uh, there's no sense scanning in on the poster. I, I guess I'll show you the logo. You hardly ever see these on 60s posters. There's a can of Rheingold, Rheingold Beer. I'm enunciating like I've had a beer, but I haven't. But uh, um, taking place at, the skating, at a skating rink in Central Park, New York. And... The Young Rascals were grooving along with a top 10 hit, Groovin', at the very moment, at the time. And even though it says 8 p.m. here, um, by reports and accounts, there were two shows. Actually, they, they split them in two and had two shows. And Len Chandler, mentioned below the Young Rascals, a 32-year-old folky at the time, he opened the first show. But the second show, perhaps the 8 p.m. one, was opened by Hendrix, The Experience. And he came out, and The Experience did four songs, Purple Haze, their new single, Hey Joe, their first single, which hadn't charted, um, Like a Rolling Stone, the Bob Dylan cover, and Wild Thing, the Trogs cover. So those were four songs, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, should I, yeah, let me show you this. This graphic is big enough. Look at every single act, all seats, one dollar. So that means for this show, you saw Hendrix do those four songs uh, with the experience before he was famous, and the Young Rascals do some of their hits for a buck. That's obscene, I'm telling you. Um, and uh, uh, by, by one report, the Rascals did not want to follow Hendrix. They're sitting there going, oh my God, you know, Len Chandler, the folky we can follow, but what's this? And it's like, how do you follow Hendrix? Even before he's known, how do you follow him? And they apparently uh, reportedly waited like an hour before they kept the crowd waiting before they came out on stage for the second show to follow Hendrix. So that's certainly understandable. Okay, we go from a black and white boring concert poster with a neat ghost on it to a nice, ah, colors, we finally get colors into the picture. This marquee poster from Forest Hills, New York, also July 1967. I'll come in for a scan on it. You can see there's lots of cool acts on there, like the Love and Spoonful, Johnny Mathis, and so forth, depending on your musical taste. 
just scan down the list here, ending with Stephen Eady. That's really depending on your musical taste. I mean, they're, they're great entertainers. They're Las Vegas legends and everything, but it's just kind of weird to see Stephen Eady and talk about Jimi Hendrix in the same video, but that's, that's okay. That's the way the 60s was with its electricity. Um, <laughs> so, okay, so everybody certainly who's seeing this video and everybody who knows rock history knows that Hendrix opened for the Monkees for a few dates in 1967, just before he really started to break into his own. So, yep, that's right. This, uh, the green stripe, this is one of those, the Monkees. See that? There's three dates mentioned. And uh, Dick Clark is mentioned, and the radio station Good Guys are mentioned. But there's room there. There would have been room to put an opening act. But no, they just have Dick Clark and the, uh, the radio station, the WMCA Good Guys on there. But that's okay. Hendrix would not have sold tickets without anything charted yet, right? So, you know, Jimmy joined the tour down in Florida and lasted for about seven dates, seven or eight dates, something like that. Um, it's been surmised that Hendrix's management wanted the broad exposure that the hugely famous monkeys from their television show would bring. And the monkeys, by uh, reports actually out of the mouths of a couple of monkeys like Nesbeth and Torque, they just loved, and maybe Dolan's, they just loved Hendrix. They, they had just sort of discovered him themselves and said, let's put this guy on. Who cares if he's a mismatch? They weren't being... Um, Let's see, they weren't being inconsiderate of Hendrix. They were just saying, man, this guy's so fantastic. He's happening and all that stuff. So let's have a great new happening artist on our, on our uh, tour. And so both sides agreed. And the, uh, but, you know, when the tour went out, the kids wanted the monkeys. And uh, Dick Clark, who was promoting the tour, even later called it basically a disaster. And what's interesting is that these three dates were the last um, three dates of that merged, uh, that mis misaligned... Um, hybrid merging of those two artists and so depending on which account you see Jimmy either flipped the audience off or threw down his guitar at the end of the third date there uh, or both and walked off the stage and that was the end of it he decided he just couldn't um, you know just obviously it wouldn't it wasn't a good career move let's put, <laughs> let's put it that way um, so Hendrix is a ghost act pretty cool but I've got a gear shift change to make here on you and not even put a poster down Whoop, right back up that's right. <clears throat> Look at the purple stripe. Simon and Garfunkel. August is at 17... No, August 12th. An evening with Simon and Garfunkel. <clears throat> Any idea who the opening act was? 